It was a pretty busy weekend in the life of Duke basketball. We got a couple of injury updates from head coach John Shire and a couple of key sophomores who are working back from off-season procedures. We discussed that and a whole lot more on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. It's so great to have you here with us on this Monday, July 17th, 2023. My name is JJ Jackson, and I proudly serve as the host of this program. Locked on Blue Devils is your one-stop shop for all things Duke athletics. We've got a big focus on Duke basketball and the awesome fan base that's always supporting Duke and what they're up to. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. I'm on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. Also, make sure that you follow this podcast for free wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, all those spots. Your support of Lockdown Blue Devils means the world to us. And coming soon, we'll bring back our five-star Fridays, where we shout out those who left us five-star ratings and reviews. If you're watching this show on YouTube, thank you for doing that. Hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend, and so much more. Also, be sure to uh, like this video as well if you're watching us on YouTube. On today's show, we're going to talk about some injury updates from Duke basketball, and who better to discuss these things than with my pal Kevin Connolly, who is the site expert for Ball Durham. Kevin, the time is always greatly appreciated, and uh, yeah, it's a great time of year that as we get further into the summer, more content is coming out in regards to Duke basketball. We had a press conference towards the end of last week with uh, head coach John Shire and a couple of players, so new and fresh content is always what we love. Yeah, it's uh, good to talk about. Thanks for having me, JJ. Absolutely, man. We've got a lot to discuss, like I talked about. And uh, with that, John Shire took to the podium uh, this past week there at Cameron Indoor Stadium uh, with local media and a lot of folks being able to zoom in and be a part of the coverage as well. As we take a look at at some of the headlines and notes that he had, a lot of people really wanted to ask follow-ups in regards to some of the off-season procedures that took place for some of these Duke basketball players. Yeah, and the biggest name out there was Kyle Filipowski because it was announced that he was go- undergoing double hip surgery basically once he decided to return uh, to Duke. And that was the, the biggest question out there um, that really everybody uh, had their minds on. And so with that being said, I mean, we heard that Kyle Filipowski is making really good progress himself. Kyle Filipowski also got a chance to talk to the media. He's not quite to uh, kind of the full contact portion of this of uh, his recovery right but um, able to shoot around a little bit and it seems as though uh, his return could be a little bit sooner than we initially anticipated is that correct yeah the the diagnosis coming out from John Shire was that he was ahead of schedule and Kyle Filipowski even has said it multiple times in the last couple of weeks that he's hoping to get back on the court running fives or even threes or fours by August in, in those full contact drills so um, obviously it's a gradual proce- uh process up to that full contact ability but um you got to remember right now it's also mid-july and even if he doesn't get cleared for full contact until late august at the latest say it's still late august there's no there's no game coming around the corner until early november so um it's patience 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 i know everyone wants to see uh kyle filipowski out there in five on five contact drills but uh it seems like things are progressing really nicely with his uh recovery which is awesome to hear. I mean, obviously, uh, something that we're going to touch on throughout today's show is the Brotherhood podcast that has debuted. It's something released uh, by the Duke team. Ryan Young, who's set to be a, a leader for this basketball team, has been the host of the podcast. First two guests on the show being Kyle Flapowski and uh, Tyrese Proctor. And Flip was talking about he knew at some point he would eventually have to have hip surgery. Uh, and this dates all the way back to his high school playing days. So uh, to go through double hip surgery 
It's definitely something I, I don't think anybody wants to go through, but it seems like Flip knew that this would be inevitable for quite some time. Yeah, that podcast was really interesting to listen to because like he he was very open and honest about everything with his hips. It was like nothing that he did during the season um, and no like point to look back. And it was like, okay, there's where he hurt his hips. He said like this was something that just um, was always inside of him and that his hips were just, I think what he said was like they were almost too big and they had, <laughs> he had to have them like uh, shaven down to a certain uh, length or whatever. Um, yeah, so it was really interesting to see like and how it didn't have any effect on his decision to come back or go to the NBA because it was a procedure that he was always going to have to have. And so now that he has had that procedure, now that he's on pace to return here sometime soon, I, I think that means uh, we're going to get good things from Kyle Filipowski uh, upcoming this season. Mark Mitchell, also another player who a lot of people are uh, excited for his return into a sophomore season as of this morning. Here again on, on Monday, July 17th, we're seeing athletic drives to the bucket from Mark Mitchell, full explosion dunks. And so it appears as though his body is uh, feeling better and better as we get closer to the start of the new season. Yeah, you heard this injury with Mark Mitchell and you're a little bit confused. You're like, wait, did I miss something? Was there some type of announcement that I missed? And got to go all the way back to that game against Tennessee when um, he was ruled out with a knee injury that he suffered in practice. And um, again, a slow progression forward for him as well, but um, not as serious as a double hip surgery that Kyle Filipowski had, but good to see that he's back out there. Um, didn't run through in the four-on-four -four scrimmage uh, last week, but it seems like he's back out there in contact drills to begin this week. Can't wait to talk about some of that four-on-four -four footage that was released by Duke uh, that we'll be able to get in and discuss throughout the week. Uh, but uh, we've got more to discuss here today on Locked On Blue Devils, and we'll do that here in just a moment. Locked On Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel is one of our absolute favorite sponsors, and it is the number one sports book in America. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. All you have to do is bet 20 bucks, and you'll land $200 back in bonus bets win or lose. That's 200 so you could spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under, who you think is going to hit the first home run of the game, how many stolen bases there will be, all of that and so much more, and it's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 back in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. We move forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. We do it all the time, but if someone's not aware of BallDurham.com and what you're able to do over on that website, Kevin, promote your work. What do you guys have going on over there? We're over everything right now in terms of Duke basketball. Um, mentioned these press conferences, podcasts, um, videos coming out of practices. We're covering it all, giving our thoughts. And obviously, um, here in the summer months, it's always big recruiting season. Um, so we're all over the recruiting topics as well. Guys cutting down their lists, guys getting offered, any decision dates looming. Um, we're all over that as well. So like you said, you can read us at balldurham.com and follow us on Twitter at ball underscore Durham. Give Kevin a follow as well at Kevin Connolly 24 as you're able to post all your links to your stories. Great work there. You've got an expanding team that's growing at Ball Durham. And so really would love for people to go and support the work that you've got going on uh, yourself there, Kevin. So speaking of new content that's there for people to take in, we've mentioned it already, but the Brotherhood podcast has debuted. What in the world is this, Kevin Connolly? Well, it's a Duke basketball podcast. It is straight from the horse's mouth, uh, <laughs> if, if, if you like that term. Um, Ryan Young's the host. You mentioned that the first two guests he's had on, Kyle Filipowski and Tyrese Proctor, and gives you an inside look at these types of players. I mean, Ryan Young, um, he's not overly persistent on his questions, but uh, as in the first two episodes, Flip and Tyrese, they were really open to him, and, and you learn some really cool, um, interesting facts and inside stories um, about these two these players and um, you look at that Kyle Filipowski episode and they went deep into what was it like behind the scenes of um, the infamous Virginia tech throat punching um, in the <laughs> final seconds um, and things of that nature. So um, it's really cool to get a, a, a look 
peek behind the curtain of what it's like to be uh, a member of the Duke basketball program. Yeah, and someone that walks in their shoes similar, similarly, right? Like like Ryan Young. I can't talk today, but someone that does the <laughs> same things, uh, Ryan Young being a peer of Kyle Filipowski and Tyrese Proctor. I mean, right out of the gates, he's asking them about their class schedules, yeah. what it's been like on the academic side of things, and it's just fun to watch them kind of talk back and forth because they are at similar parts of their life. And so uh, really, really fun to kind of hear the banter back and forth that goes along with it. And, and then Tyrese Proctor has been a recent guest on the podcast as well. And another player that's coming back for his sophomore season and uh, Tyrese Proctor kind of talking about the fact that, uh, yeah, there really wasn't much question whether or not he was going to return. And uh, he wants to remind people that he is supposed to be a college freshman right now. And he's already got a year's worth of experience under his belt. Yeah, and, and both episodes really gave that inside perspective into, okay, what was your decision process like of returning to Duke for Kyle Filipowski, probably as a top 20 pick? They go into the NIL a little bit, and, and again, you think with all these people coming back that NIL is at the forefront, and Kyle Filipowski, he kind of said, no, that's not really the case. Uh, is it an added benefit? Sure, but like that wasn't his main reason uh, to come back to Duke and and Tyrese Proctor, yeah, that that was a that was a big part of the episode where you have a player coming over from Australia, not really familiar with the United States, reclasses a year ahead. So really, this is supposed to be his freshman year. And I mean, people projecting him as a top fifteen pick if things pan out how they should for him this year. I'm really excited to see year two of Tyrese Proctor. I've said this very frequently on the podcast. You will continue to hear us talk about this going into the season. And yeah, just really fun to kind of hear their personalities go back and forth. Tyrese Proctor, not the biggest fan of American cuisine, it seems, uh, in their conversation, which was a little hurtful to uh, <laughs> some of us Americans. I like to think we've got good food, Kevin. We just got to set Tyrese up with the good spots. I think so too, but <laughs> it's funny when you when you hear people either that go overseas on a vacation or come here, it seems like they're the Americans going overseas is always saying how good the food is and these other countries. And then the people coming to America, it's like, eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe you have to hook them up with some, uh, some real fast food places to try and get them in that uh, American food spirit. No kidding. Yeah. We've got to set them up for success. That's for sure. Uh, in that conversation, I thought it was fun to talk about um, Proctor's kind of playmaking. And there was a, a conversation going back and forth about whether or not Ryan Young or, uh, or Tyrese Proctor would have more dunks this upcoming basketball season. Cause uh, Young finally got him one uh, in the ACC tournament in that pit game this year. And, and Proctor certainly can. He had a really big drive it was a Virginia Tech game, maybe, uh, with a one-handed punch there uh, at the rim. Would love to see more dunks from Tyrese Proctor this upcoming season. But the fact that uh, Ryan Young was throwing a little shade his way, asking if he'd be able to get more dunks than Tyrese this season. Yeah, you're almost a, just a fly on the wall for a conversation between two 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 teammates. And uh, good way to look at this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really fun just to. So basically, everyone wants to say, oh, I'd love to be a fly on the wall in the locker room or in this place or that place. And this podcast really gives you that chance. Make sure you check it out. It seems like there are going to be other cool people uh, coming up on the program. They've released kind of a promo clip that's been out there. So already a couple of episodes with Tyrese Proctor and Kyle Filipowski. Uh, I saw Steve Wojciechowski in the interview room with Ryan Young. So that'll be an interesting conversation, I'm sure, that they were able to record recently. And so uh, definitely a fan of this, definitely a fan of more opportunities for the players to speak about what's going on in their day-to-day -day life as student athletes. Uh, who knows? Ryan Young might have a career, a future in this media thing uh, if, if basketball doesn't quite work out for him because he's really fun to listen to. Yeah, he is. And you look at Ryan Young and, the big thing on him was academics coming from Northwestern to Duke. And um, he's proved that he has some game. Um, but yeah, now he's dipping his toe into podcasting. And uh, who knows, maybe he'll be the next version of JJ Reddick. <laughs> Lockdown Blue Devils here today. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham. So Kevin talking about some of the festivities over the last few days in the weekend. Las Vegas NBA Summer League continues to move along. We saw a really awesome performance from DJ Stewart this past weekend, who's playing with the Philadelphia 76ers. 
uh, 36 points on the day for DJ, which was a really, really impressive showing. Yeah, it really was. And that's what you want to see. Those guys that um, maybe got buried in the G League this past couple of years. You want to see them shine on this big stage of Summer League on national television with um, basically teams and scouts and personnel from all 30 NBA teams there. And maybe even DJ Stewart can try and lock on with the Philadelphia 76ers still in the midway point of the NBA offseason. Teams still have transactions to make. And hopefully um, a team notices that he can really score the ball and gives him a chance with a contract. We take a look at some of the other performances that we saw in Las Vegas with uh, Summer League moving along. Uh, interesting to note on Friday night in the New York Knicks game, uh, we saw John Shire, Jay Lucas, and Rachel Baker sitting courtside as Trevor Keels was playing for the Knicks. Uh, so far in Summer League, the shooting numbers have not been great for Keels, which is something that is going to have to continue to improve if he wants to make it work in the NBA going into Friday's contest had only been shooting 25% from three, but with the Duke coaches sitting courtside at summer league on Friday night, Trevor Keels went seven of 10 overall from the floor, including four of five from three point range. So that's uh, really impressive to see from Keels. Uh, but Kevin, as we talked about uh, going into the draft process for Trevor, who ended up being the second round pick, Got to make sure you improve those three-point percentage numbers or else teams just aren't going to give you those opportunities. Yeah, it's been a tough summer league for Trevor Keels, and that was concerning considering it was his second summer league um, after being that second-round pick last year. And, hey, maybe uh, show some promise in, in one of your final summer league games getting hot from the floor. Um, but for a Knicks team that doesn't really use a deep, deep bench under Tom Thibodeau, um, feels like it's going to be tough for him to um, not only just crack the roster, but certainly crack the rotation now in his second year in the league. Looking forward to seeing what else happens uh, as we get ready for a new upcoming NBA season to see how these future Blue Devils uh, can make an impact on the, or excuse me, former Blue Devils can make an impact on the league. And so with that being said, with so many people in Las Vegas, Coach K was also there. And so a night out, a good dinner with the team, uh, and former players together. We saw Duke men's basketball release a lot of photos from the evening, and uh, it's something that Duke fans absolutely love. We love the content that comes out with all the former players of the Brotherhood getting a chance to be together. And, of course, Mike Krzyzewski's there front and center. Yeah, it, it feels like this has started a couple years ago with Duke having a, a summer league dinner in Vegas, um, and now Mike Krzyzewski goes with his wife and um, 40 to 50 uh <laughs> People surrounded with the Duke basketball program, former players, former coaches. Um, yeah, it's, it's really always um, a, a summer treat to see everyone getting together and, and just catching up and getting to know one, one another. And um, that, that the pictures are always priceless when they come out from uh, from that night. Yeah, a lot of players that never played together at Duke, but obviously have a well bonded connection with the fact that they played. Uh, for Duke basketball, all the coaches, uh, both past, present, and future. You know, you think about Shire and his staff uh, being there. Uh, Emil Jefferson was in Las Vegas as he sort of transitions to this next Boston Celtics phase of his life. We saw even Quinn Snyder, who's the Atlanta Hawks mm -hmm. head coach now, with Mike Bray, who's no longer at Notre Dame, of course, had been on Mike Krzyzewski's staff, and now he's going to be an assistant coach with the Hawks and Quinn Snyder. I mean, we saw everybody at this dinner in Las Vegas. Yeah, you saw coaches, you saw former players, um, the the G-leaguers, quote-unquote, like Cassius Stanley, Matt Hurt. Um, yeah, if, if, if you wanted to go down the uh, entire list of attendees, um, you'd have a pretty good time filling up the time in your podcast here. Uh, it'd probably take you over 20 minutes to go down <laughs> that list of everybody that was there. Everybody was there. And, and so with that being said, you mentioned, of course, uh, Matt Hurt and Cassius Stanley, those guys getting some run in summer league. Uh, not rookies anymore. They've had their opportunities in the NBA. And those are two players, of course, with Hurt playing for Duke for two seasons. Uh, but Cassius Stanley, even the one year that he had at Duke, I'm really hoping that they can get a shot in the NBA and can, can continue to put together impressive performances. Yeah, if, if you performed well in summer league – you want to carry that right over to training camp. And if you didn't perform as you would hope um, in summer league, you still have a lot of summer left to try and um, work out and 
work out for teams and send videos out and that whatnot, trying to get a spot on a training camp roster. So um, still a lot of time left in the summer for these players to try and latch on to an NBA team. Moving forward here in the month of July, we'll have uh, obviously more content, I would imagine, being released from Duke basketball. We've got four-on-four footage that was released that we'll be able to discuss and break down uh, throughout the week. But, Kevin, just what what are some of those other things that you're looking forward to uh, finding out over the next few days and weeks in regards to Duke basketball? Well, we know the tooth of Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell Filipowski. I'm not going to see him really in five-on-five until August and Mark Mitchell seems like he's back in five five on five. Jeremy Roach, probably the next one with that toe issue. Um, it feels like if there was a game next week, he'd be able to play in it. But again, it's just July, so you're trying to take things easy with him. So you want to see him get back out on the floor. And I think the continuation progression of the freshmen. I mean, the videos we've seen so far, these freshmen, especially the guards and Caleb Foster and Jared McCain, they look really, really good. Um, so maybe you want to see that development, continued development from them and a um, couple of eye-popping plays from a guy like Sean Stewart who could be in for a big role in his first year. Kevin, certainly do appreciate the time as always. Looking forward to talking with you again here soon, okay? Thanks, JJ. All right, that's our pal Kevin Connolly, the site expert for Ball Durham, joining us once again here on Locked on Blue Devils. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Blue Devils. Follow me on Twitter at underscore JJ underscore Jackson underscore. That's going to do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you soon. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.